I don't have any music. Hi. I know it's Friday and it's like late night. Hi, Cody. It's late night with Lash 411. It's like after hours on a Friday night at like 11 o'clock. Nice. What is up, everybody? How's everybody doing tonight? Oh, can you see them, honeys? How's everybody doing? What are you guys doing tonight? Or not doing, should I say, since we're all here. Hi. Hi, I'm so sorry I missed y'all last night. Like, it completely slipped my mind. Today doesn't even feel like Friday to me. Hello, Barber Mans. Welcome. If you want to watch any of the past episodes, you can watch them on YouTube. Um, but yeah, it totally slipped my mind last night. My bad. Um, I guess, you know, with doing these trainings and everything, it's like... I'm like busier, if that's possible. So, um... I was packing the kits last night, and I'm pretty sure you saw the little video. I had to post it also to the page. I really got to do better with <laughs> taking pictures of these damn things and telling everybody what's in these kits and in these gift bags, right? Because I'm pretty sure if they knew. Well, I am still going to do that giveaway for the 25K followers. Um, nah, today, I just got the gold bags, the gold Lash 411 bags, so... I will take the pictures, I promise. Um, and guess what? I finally got a charger long enough, a cord long enough so that we can do this and my phone won't die. Um, Pippi Long Pocket, send me a DM, okay? Um, I don't really snap. It's all on the, my IG story. I used to snap, but it was really just to go stalk. <laughs> I only used snap before when I used to um, cover events. And now I just use IG stories, considering that they stole the snap functionality, right? No makeup, no brows on. Oh, it's all good though. They still look fine. I do have lips on though. Um, all right, who's got questions? Because I mean, I'm gonna, you can start writing your questions. Um, actually, I didn't even ask you guys where you're calling in from. Where are you calling in from? Shout out your city and your state. <laughs> I don't use D curl. That's probably why my retention lasts. I don't use D curl. Thank you, Frank. How are you how are your training classes different from the major companies? Well, one, I'm not a major company. Um, I'm a lash artist who's been to enough trainings. And I've absorbed enough information and now my calling is to give back and help. So what I do is I tell the truth. Um, that's probably what the difference is between me and the others is I tell the truth. Well, I'm not going to say that they lie, but I'm pretty blunt. Um, I train with different products because I use different products. I don't use just one brand. And actually a lot of companies have graciously sponsored the workshops and donated their products. You know what? I'm going to go grab a gift bag just to show you. While you keep posting your um, city and state, I'm going to go get the gift bag, okay? So you guys should feel lucky because this is like an exclusive sneak peek into this shit because, you know, I obviously haven't posted it. But for starters, this gold bag, it's like the golden ticket from like Willy Wonka and shit, right? This gold bag is going to hold the kits and like, you know, your stuff, right? And if you're going on the walking tour, you're going to get one of these bags so you can put all your shit in it. You know, all the shit that you buy at the trade show because I'm gonna be taking you to all the lash booths. There's 26 lash booths at the show this year. So if you didn't sign up for a session yet and you're going, um, make sure you sign up. Just click the link in my bio. Okay, so let's get started with this gift bag too. This bag is from Borboletta Beauty. Borboletta Beauty has sponsored our workshops and they have donated two tweezers, a 
set of lashes. And there's also adhesive, but it's in the fridge. The Lash Chick Lashes, two tweezers. So what is that? That's now four tweezers we're up to, okay? That's already four tweezers for volume, okay? I mean, you can use them for classic as well. Um, then we've got also a tweezer from Illumino Lashes. Their package actually just came in today, so I have to open up their box, sorry. This one is from Cosmetics, and Cosmetics, flock tips, lint-free pads, mascara wands, and a dental mirror so that you can see your client's lashes. And Cosmetics is pretty cheap, guys. Like, you can get, buy your disposable products in bulk. So they donated that, yay. Um, the Lash Exchange has sent a tweezer case to fit all those tweezers that you're gonna get in your gift bag. Uh, Lash Affair has sent some Lash Map stickers. EBO has sent some pink iPads, and you know I love those pink iPads. Barber Mans, all you have to do is go read my credentials. If you click the link in my bio and select volume training, you can read my lash story and all of my credentials from 2008 to present, if that helps. I like that you're trying to be thorough and ask questions. That's exactly what you should do. Um, but everybody who keeps, I know this is your first time and everybody who comes here kind of already knows because I've talked about it before. Sorry. Okay, so you're welcome. Anytime. Um, let me take a look at see these questions and where everybody's calling from. Let's see. We got Atlanta. My lashes are in L curl. And actually, I'm going to see my friend tomorrow and see if she can take this one out and this one out. Because there was one that was lashed above my lash line. <laughs> Um, all right, what have we got here? ATL, Philadelphia, Boston, Toronto, Briz, Australia. Wow, kid, we kicking it down under. Victorville, California, Charlotte, North Carolina, Alberta, Canada, Detroit, Michigan, Alberta, Canada again. Um, Orange County, TC, don't know exactly where that is. Honolulu, Hawaii. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Bronx, New York, ATL, all right, Bronx, Barber Mans, I'm in Jersey. Toledo, Ohio. Um, okay, so now let me go through these questions. Uh, Cause I saw some, right, so I answered my curl is L. Let's see, who's next? My humidity in Orange County is off the roof, 60 to 68%. I got a dehumidifier, but it's not helping. The AC is not helping either, any tips. The dehumidifier, you have to measure your room and make sure that it's the suitable size for your room. For example, I am in a six by eight room, so having a smaller dehumidifier um, that covers the square space works fine. But if you happen to be in a bigger room, you might need a uh, different heavy duty dehumidifier. Um, and also put it right next to your workstation. You might need more than one. Um, but the AC, well, the AC is not going to help because that's not really going to, that's only fixing temperature and not humidity. Um, yeah. Also, there's, there's higher, uh, there's adhesives that you can use in the 60 to 68. Um, for example, the one that I use, Lash Makers, I've actually used it up to 70%. Um, I know Sugar Lash has the Elite, I believe it's 20 to 75% humidity and let me see 60 to 68 you can probably use something up to 65 percent a lot of glues um are useful up to 65 percent so maybe you can try that um let's see what's the best way to practice i'm a newbie i gotta be honest i really don't like practice lashes you guys you've seen those strips that are like they're really hard to isolate so i personally don't like to practice on those but um you should be practicing on people Practice on your friends, practice on your family, practice on, I wouldn't say practice on the back of your hand anymore because you can develop an allergic reaction because you're placing the glue on your skin. Um, yeah, practice on people. Are you practicing fans? What are you practicing? Classic? Volume? 
Which curls do I prefer? I love an L curl. L plus curl is my favorite curl. What show? The show, there's a last show in, well, it's not a last show. It's a beauty trade show. Um, it's in Las Vegas this year. They usually do it in, they do it in New York, Las Vegas, and I think somewhere in Canada. Um, but they are, do, it's the Las Vegas IBS slash IECSC trade shows. One of them is for beauty and nails, which is uh, the IBS side, and the, or rather for cosmetologists. And then the other side is the IECSC, that's the spa side. That is um, for estheticians, aesthetics, cosmetologists can go over there too. Um, if you purchase the admission to the IECSC side, you also get into the IBS side. So it's better to purchase that one. Um, hi, Flying Platy Fee, glad to have you. Um, and if you want to know about other events that are going on, just click the link in my bio and hit Lash Events. Um, and if you know of any events going on, please add it to the website. Um, in the business class you offer, do you coach on how to run your business? I absolutely do. Um, are there any Lash shows in Texas coming up? Uh, not that I know of off the top of my head. Does anybody else here know of any shows? If you do, please add it to the website. Um, oh, you said fridge. Do you store your adhesive in there? And if so, for how long? Did I mention that? Did I say that? Oh, the adhesive, Borboletta's adhesive. Yeah, I store unopened adhesive in the fridge. If you want to know more about that, you can, um, search Lash 411, which is, when I say that, I mean click the link in my bio and hit search Lash 411 and type adhesive in the fridge that easy or type the fridge um do i train in hawaii i don't but i could <laughs> um i do offer private trainings guys so actually while i'm in atlanta um one of my actually a girl who i took uh my very first certification with which i did in atlanta um she hit me up and asked me if we could spend a few hours together going over volume so I'm, I'll be spending like one to two hours with her. So if in any of the cities that I'm going to be in, if you're there and you want to see me for a couple of hours or even an hour or whatever, hit me up and I'll let you know if I have time. Um, and then at least we can get something done in that hour. Um, same thing for the mentorships. If you're going to be in Las Vegas and you want to spend like an hour with me, half hour, 45 minutes, whatever, you want me to help you with something, show you something, we can do that. So right there on the trade show floor. So yeah, let me know. Or if you want a private training while I'm there in Las Vegas, let me know. Um, let's see. Uh, well, Pippi Long Pockets, I talked about adhesive in the refrigerator. You don't put, just look up that post, adhesive in the fridge. You'd never put opened adhesive in the fridge, unopened only. Um, and in that post, I explain why. How do you get your brand name on products? Uh, ask the manufacturers who are making your brand, your products. Um, yes, Barbara, man, take notes, man. Take out a notepad and pen, bruh. <laughs> it gets thick up in here. Um, what's my favorite adhesive for the summer? I only use one adhesive and it's worked for me all year around and that's Lash Makers. And if you get it? Try use my code lashes411 for any codes that I have with the companies. Just go to my website, guys. It's under special offers. Um, let's see. Oh, we got some more. We got Oakland up in here, more Australia up in here, Utah up in here, Toronto. Um, how do you find vendors to get products wholesale? Did you try on Instagram searching eyelash factory? Um, help on pricing your full sets uh, look within a 25 mile radius of your area and see what is the going rate for a set of eyelash extensions and then also stop and consider what's your experience do you produce a set that's worth full price yet or are you still new like we always have to remember we have to have a starting point and then a point to work towards okay like we're always growing like me personally I'm not even still at the price that I am going to I'm shooting for because 
while my work is amazing, <laughs> I like to think it's amazing. I what I what I feel like it's worth, I'm happy with the price that I have right now. But I'm I still have a lot more to learn. You know what I'm saying? We all do. We're always going to all be students. You're tr if a trainer has stopped training and has not taken a class in a year or two, something's wrong with that picture, okay? Every year, we all, all, me, you, we all have to take continuing education and training because our industry is ever evolving. Not to mention, we don't learn everything that there is to know in a 16 hour class and each trainer has a different expertise. We don't all necessarily teach the same way or teach the same thing. So that's why in my my little open letter to you on my training workshop page, it says you will take many classes on your last journey, but you know, no matter what, our objective is to make you great. So let's go be great together, right? That's, I mean, look, I have objectives. I'm very serious when it comes to this shit. The reason why I'm so serious is because I don't want to put my name on something and then there's a problem. Like I don't have ass shit. And that's probably why sometimes I take a little bit longer with, you know, releasing shit. Like it's just not going to happen. That like I put to I put everything into that training manual. I call my students like I'm serious. I have an open door policy. I answer questions. I've been doing this shit for free for the last two years. Let's, let's put it that way. I'm happy to help people, but like, I don't even know where, where, how, and what I was going with this. I just found myself on a rant, right? Jeez. I opened up a can of worms. What the fuck am I talking about, right? <laughs> let's see. So you have to measure the space you work in to compensate for your humidity. If your humidity is a problem, yeah, you do. Like, there are machines that help regulate your humidity and temperature in a room. However, you have to measure the room first to make sure that you get a machine that operates for that space. Um, also, guys, be careful when you ask somebody what adhesive they use just because you saw them having good retention. I kind of cringe sometimes when I show my retention, like, at three to four weeks, and then I get the messages that say, what are you using? Let me tell you why I cringe. I cringe because I'm concerned that I'm referring somebody to an adhesive that they're not ready to use yet. And what I mean by that is if you're a newer lash artist, that adhesive may not be for you. That is a one to two second dry time adhesive. Newbies usually need something that's like four to five seconds. Like if you're not fast enough yet, I've been doing this for four years, so I work fast. And I've, I've actually always worked fast. So like... I even remember my second trainer telling me, wow, you work really fast. So what I'm trying to say is, is just because it works for me doesn't mean it's going to work for you. So I just want to put that disclaimer out there and just be careful when you ask somebody what adhesive they use. You should ask additional questions like, and what's the humidity and temperature you use it in? Where do you live? Because we all live in different states that have different seasons. You know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, obviously, we're all in fucking, what are we, in spring? But you know what I'm saying. Um, let's see. What kind of lashes should you use when your clients have straight lashes? These L curls are right here. When is the show? Look at the lash events. Click the link in my bio. What's your favorite scheduling app? I posted it on my IG story today. Schedulicity. Um... I started out doing individual lashes at Bronner Brothers in Atlanta. How big is the learning curve? What do you mean individual lashes? Are you talking about clusters and flares? Because that is nothing like what we do. We use two hands. Um, Barbara Mans, look, when you search Lash 411, click the link in my bio, hit search Lash 411, and type in clusters versus flares. Or, sorry, no, clusters versus eyelash extensions. You'll see the difference. Um, I don't charge by the hour. I charge for my sets. For fills. Yeah, I don't charge by the hour. I don't charge by time. I don't charge by a week. It's just a flat rate. Um, I do not have plans for trainings in Arizona, but if you have your own studio and want, like, a private training, send me a message. Um...
What up, Japan? Oganki this guy. <laughs> How many people per class? I only take four technique students per class. I'm only one person. I don't think I could. I mean, I haven't done it yet, but um, yeah. For the business class, I can take more because we're just talking and going through the manual. But for the technique class, only four. I keep it small. Uh, for practice barber mans, if you're looking for an adhesive, just go to lash411.info. Click the link in my bio and go to the directory. So you'll see there's a bunch of products in the directory. But I would suggest that you get a hygrometer first. You can get one of these on Amazon. Shit, you can search this on Lash411 as well. Get one of these so you can find out what your room is. That way you'll know how to choose an adhesive. Um... Yeah, babe, stop doing the clusters, please. <laughs> clusters ruin people's lashes. Those are only meant to be worn like one to three days at that. People's lashes shed and they can't shed if those clusters are stuck on top of their lashes. And that's what causes damage. Is it critical when dispensing adhesive to have it come out as a bubble and not flat? I find sometimes it comes out flat, not squeezing the bottle. Uh... What surface are you putting it on? Are you putting it on a jade stone? If so, after you shake the shit out of it, take a piece of double stick tape, like jade stone, take double stick tape, put that on top of there, and then put the bubble up and dispense it. It should stay in a nice little bubble. Uh, the brow and lash bar, I want private training for my studio. Please send me a direct message and include where you are located. No, the cost of travel is not included in the fee. So for the private training, it is whether it's a one day or two day plus travel. So if I have to fly, if I have to stay at a hotel, that also, you're, you're, you're paying for that. But if you really think about it, it's the equivalent to if you came to me, which is usually the case, usually a student has to go to the trainer for a private training. Same shit, you'd be paying for a hotel and a flight too. So instead, you're paying for me to come to you. Um, any tips on isolation technique? Well, do not use a straight tweezer, that's for sure. You got to use an angled tweezer. There we go. You got to use an angled tweezer. This is a Dumont SS45. You can get one of these from the Lash Exchange and use my code LASH411. Um, yeah. Do, don't use a straight tweezer. If you're having problem with uh, like crisscross lashes or really curly lashes, take a piece of tape and stretch the eye. That's also useful for inner corners as well. It'll just spread all, like the lashes will be like this and it'll spread it apart like that. Um, how do you get faster? You keep doing it. <laughs> you keep doing it. The only way to get faster is to keep doing it. It's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take a few months. That's the thing about lashes. It's going to take you a year before you even think your work looks the way that you want it to look. Being a licensed aesthetics is not required in my state. I've already been certified, but would it be required to come to you for more experience? No. If there are like six to eight states that do not require licensure so if you fall in one of those states then that's then you don't need but you do need to be classically trained as in you need to have classic experience or know how to i need you to know how to isolate pretty much because we can't waste time on that um and you wouldn't come to me i would come to you um do i have any different type of preparation for sunny days versus rainy days no just on rainy days when the clients leave i tell them make it a point to just keep it dry i mean the humidity in the air is like on a hundred so keep it as dry as possible as they're leaving i mean by the time they leave their lashes are cured anyway i use a nebulizer but no no difference in preparation how often do you shake every new drop i feel like i shake too much so i was shaking every new drop and now i just shake every new client so i also got one of those 
paint shaker things I have to put batteries in it but to put batteries in it I've got to unscrew the damn thing in the back and I got to find a screwdriver you know so <laughs> um yeah so I just shake for each client give it a really good shake for each client um and I always throw away the first drop of glue so when you go to dispense it that first drop drop it somewhere where you're not going to use it that next drop that's fresh put that in why because adhesive could have been stuck in the nozzle and then that's not so fresh so get rid of that first um do i recommend using a glue ring for volume i gotta be honest no so i always used to use a glue ring especially going from classic to volume and then after my last volume training, I found she she used a jade stone and I found that I had better control over my glue pickup with a jade stone. So I prefer it. I tried actually earlier this week to use a, a glue ring. It just it wasn't for me. So I'll, I'll I can use we can use glue rings on classic all day. But there's something in just about the dipping in, the tweezer getting in the way, the well, it being too deep. You then have to fill it all the way to the top. And then if you fill it all the way to the top, then you got to worry about it spilling over potentially on a client's... Yeah, yeah. Nah. Don't even bother. Um, are pre-made volumes extinct? No. Actually, they're kind of on the come up right now. There's two companies that actually sell acceptable pre-made volume. That's Illumino Lashes and Mayrocky Lashes. Um search lash 411 um but illumino i have a code with so you can save 10 percent uh lash 411 with illumino that's actually where i taught the class in oakland good brown bella all right send me a message let me know where you are and if you have your own studio um yeah brown bella stop using this straight tweezer girl trust me it will change your life when you switch over to an angle tweezer. That Duma, it's a $60 tweezer, so yes, it's expensive, but it's made of Swiss steel, it's light. That, look, I will always say there's no such thing as the best, but I was actually thinking about this today. I really feel like that Duma tweezer for isolating is the best. Like, you will never hear me say anything is the best, because there's really no such thing. That's the best. I don't use primer. Um, she said, what primer do you use? I don't no primer i stopped using primer when i started to notice some of my clients were coming in with white flaky lids primer dries out the lashes and the skin um should only be really used on people who have really oily lids and it burns if you get too much of that on the flock tip forget about it your fucking client is hurting and burning and it, no so i stopped using that instead i use I wash it's like purified water I just put this on one flock tip so you take flock tip right I put ooh, one drop on that I don't put it on the other one and then I mush those two together because now they're both wet enough okay and then I go through one under the lash one on top of the lash and go from um, what do you call it root to tip and shimmy up and down but no primer so you train people who are skilled already I have zero skills at this uh yeah well if you want to do a private training I can do private training for beginners but right now my group classes are for volume um, beginners which means you should already already be classically trained um there's no such thing to who's got a drink tonight damn it I forgot to pour some liquor because we always play this game whenever somebody asks me who's the best there's no such thing so lashology asked what is your best volume glue no such thing but the one that I've been working with so far is lash makers the one I'm actually testing this week is Illuminos. so I'll let you know how that goes uh, what brand glue remover do you use or recommend doesn't matter which one it is just use a cream remover okay cream remover is better than gel and liquid remover because cream remover won't move like gel and liquid that can also seep into their eyes now imagine if your client is talking or they happen to open the eye just a little, little, little bit that shit's getting in there i've i've put gel remover 
on myself before to remove my lashes the fucking worst thing ever use cream remover okay i use the one from lash makers there's also one from vivian i'm not too sure who else has cream remover but go to lash makers use my code lashes 411 uh some techs are saying to spray lashes after a fill is done. Wouldn't that make the eyes burn or water? Well, it depends on what they're spraying me with. I spray with a nebulizer. I don't use a nanomister. I use a nebulizer. And you can hold this right up here and not get wet at all. And this is included in the kits. I'm giving this to all of my students. That's right. Yo, I'm such a fucking generous person. And when I say that, I mean like I like to spoil. <laughs> Maybe it's the Leo in me. But yeah, a nebulizer, yes. I use a nebulizer to cure the adhesive. How do you, how do you set up your station? Like where do you put the lashes on your hand or a pad next to the head? I put it on my finger. Um, doo -doo -doo. Yes, I use um, like Poland Spring bottled water in the nebulizer. I can be your instructor. Listen, guys, we're also, look, look, for real. You're not only gonna take one training, and if you think that you were only gonna take one, that's not how it works, okay? You should be taking more trainings. One is not enough. You gotta take a few more. You gotta take at least one a year. That's what I do, at least one a year. I went to the, the Lash Conference and I learned a few new things from nine different master educators. So either go to conferences, go to shows, okay? Um, thoughts on Bella Lash products? I don't have any thoughts. I tried their Lash Pod once and I left my review about that you can search it there's a whole video on it I gave the pros and cons of it um I haven't used their lashes because I don't really do classic anymore I guess they also have volume but by the time I moved on to volume oh. um where did I buy my nebulizer that nebulizer I got from the lash shop you can also find them on Amazon you can go to the lash exchange and with the lash exchange I have the code so you can save 10% so if you go to the lash exchange it's code LASH411. Who are some of the Lash artists that you look up to? Ooh. Or do you just tend to focus on your own work? Oh, no. Anytime I, I do a Lash artist spotlight, I'm like totally crushing on that person's work because it's like perfect or in some kind of way. And I'm like, man, I want my work to look like that. Um, but it's almost there. I'm working on it. It's like I took a turn. I changed my tweezer in the last two weeks, and I'm noticing a difference in my work. I actually changed it again earlier this week and started using one of the ones I got from the Lash Conference. But, um, you know, obviously there's the, the usual suspects of, you know, like the Mavens and the um, the Elenas from Lash Maker. They're always goals. But um, Eyelash Tina, I love her work. I love Lana's work too, actually. Lux Lashes by Lana. I love her work. Um, some of the lash artists that I look up to. You know, someone who I really respect right now, especially after I got to see their grind and how they, how they are managing a whole lash company plus a salon, Sujin from Illumina Lashes. I was very impressed um, to see how she's holding it all down and, and men goals and when i say it because guys some of these businesses i don't know if you realize they're not a whole team of people okay so i realize you see somebody you know some of these businesses they have a whole squad of people and a whole office and interns and assistants and customer service and whatnot and some like for example lash 411 is just me there's no one else no one else is posting this stuff. No one else built that website. No one else is here lashing these clients. It's just one person. So, you know, when when some of these lash businesses, like EBL Lashes, too, like I think she's also kind of, I mean, I don't I know she probably has help, but like 
she started that that business herself too like these are smaller businesses that you should really support because they're they're girls just like us you know what i mean who've created their own businesses because they wanted to create great products like wink lash products have did you guys read her story on the women's history month like all those women who i posted there i'm i admire them as well just as business women like i admire that like boss status you know what i'm saying so not only do i admire their work but like i admire women who are bosses who help others who you know who are just trying to do something better for our industry like i really have a feeling within the next five years somewhere somehow i'm gonna be a part of something that's gonna regulate this lash industry and I can't wait, actually. Who knows? Who knows? I'm like prophesizing right now. <laughs> but good question, Cody. Uh, Minty Lash. Yep, I'm totally a Jersey girl, born and raised. Are 0 0.20 millimeter flat lashes too heavy? If they're flat lashes, probably not um flat lashes are more acceptable but i would rather if you were using a 0.15 flat lash that looks like a 0.20 but really weighs like a 0.07 go for 0.15s excuse me i love you too lana have you tried a dumont tweezer yes darling i just spoke about it search dumont tweezers on lash 411 the tweezer for isolation. Actually, I'm not even going to tell you. You know what I'm going to make you go do? When we're done here, you're going to click the link in my bio. You're going to hit search slash 411. And you're going to type isolation tweezer. Okay? And if you really want to know, you can also click the link in my bio and hit uh, lash 411's favorites. Do I use eyeglasses? Yes, I do. I use magnifiers. Search Lash 411 magnifiers. There are at least two different companies on there that sells them. Um, what do I mean by regulate? Uh, I mean that to prevent people who think that they can just pick up two tweezers and lashes and buy glue from Amazon and start lashing people and charging money for it. That's got to stop, man. That's really got to stop. That's what I mean by regulate. I mean that people, the human, the not human, the public, the general public need to know. For example, the general public knows that if a hairdresser is not licensed, that that's a no-no, right? They know that. Do they know that if a if a, a, a eyelash technician is not licensed and or certified, that's a no-no? Do they care? Considering that we're holding super sharp tweezers near their eyeballs and their fucking vision, like, it boggles my mind when I speak to some people who say that Oh, they saw somebody's a lash artist and like, oh, I can do that. And then they go and buy the products and stuff. And they don't even know that their glue can burn a hole in their pants and start a fire. That's what I'm talking about. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's just, I appreciate people who want to get into our business. I get it. Shit. Well, you're welcome. Come on in. But. There's a way to come on in. You know what I'm saying? You got to come through the front door. Don't hop through the fucking window. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you got to go through the motions the way the rest of us did. If you live in a state that doesn't require licensure, then lucky you. But you should still get training. That doesn't mean you don't get trained. And look, some training is not good. I get it. It's not. Some people, you know, put out a good, you know, front. And then you get there and you're like, yo, I wasted my money. So I got people who send me messages and say they learn more from my page than they did from the training they just attended. That's why I posted that thing yesterday where I said, do you feel like you have an open door policy with your trainer? Because I'm confused 
when somebody tells me they just paid X amount of money for a training last week and then they're coming to me asking me a question because I'm like, yo, why aren't you asking your trainer? Right? Like, it just seems logical, right? So, how do you feel about text teaching classes for 700 plus and not giving good information? Like, I seen a girl charging $750 for a class, and she's she was like, she's not telling all the secrets. You just get the basic. Well, then what the fuck is the point of that? Here's what I will tell you, too. A class at $700, that doesn't sound right either. A class to learn lashes is usually $1,000 and up. <sighs> All right, Platy P, is that better? I'm just gonna have to hold it here. Um, Grand Your Beauty Studio, send me a message. How do you deal with clients that always cancel on you? I have a no-show policy. No show policy and a same day cancellation policy. You can either have, and this is something I go over in the business class. I give all my policies out, like you, like word for word, you can copy and paste them kind of shit. Um, yeah, so I just charge them. There's a fee. That's correct, Cody. Wow, Cody, you be paying attention to me. Look at you. I'm about to make you my assistant. I need help. Okay, sorry. I was just reading through all your comments and shit. Right. So, I'm going to start to wrap this up. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Yes, it is face escape. Okay, so I'm going to start to wrap this up, but let me just say the following. So let me see, what date are we in? The June 18th. So I'm going to Atlanta this weekend to do the course. Um, if you're there, let me know. <laughs> Maybe I can come see you, come check you a little bit. Um, next week was supposed to be on june 18th was supposed to be the business class in towson maryland that's being rescheduled but i'll actually be in virginia that monday the 19th to go do a private training see one of the people who saw that i was going to be in maryland said hey since you'll already be here do you think we could book a private training and i said yeah for sure and look at that so if i'm going to be anywhere near your city sorry if i'm going to be near your city and you want to see me let me know because then that'll cut down the travel costs because I'm already there. All right. You dig? You dig? All right. Even if you want to do just an hour or two, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't have to be a full day private training. It's up to you. Um, so, right. Where was I? Right. That's what's happening on June 19th. Then Vegas is June 24th to the 26th. Um, also doing mentorships there. So if you want to do a private training and or a one-on-one, -on -one, June 25th, we're doing the walking tour. I'm just going to take this down. June 25th, we're doing the walking tour. So you're going to, if you haven't already done so, and you'll be at the show, sign up. And you're going to get one of those gold bags that I showed you before to pack all your goodies in. And we're going to go to the lash booths. There's three different sessions. Then I'll be teaching the class in Jersey, July 9th through the 10th. Oh, I see this line on my lips and it's bothering me. So I got to take this lipstick off. It's not working out. Um, July 9th to the 10th, I'll be in New Jersey. July 16th to the 17th, I will be in Dallas. July 30th to the 31st, Houston. Um, August 13th to the 14th, New York. Um, August 20th, Miami for business. August 27th to the 28th, Los Angeles. Yeah. Um, I think I'm going to burp. Okay, I guess not. <laughs> um, so, yeah, if you are in or around any of those cities and you have your own private studio and you want to see me for a little bit of time or a whole day or something, let me know in advance so I can make sure 
that um I have the time, okay? Um, let me get these last few questions in here. I've never been to the Expo in Vegas. How beneficial do you think it is for eyelash techs educational-wise and buying products? It's not really useful educational-wise. Um, some brands have trainings there as well, but it's... Look, these shows aren't specifically for lash artists. These shows are just for beauty industry altogether. So, and us lash artists, we are like 5% of that whole show. We only have 26 booths out of like 2,000 plus. So, imagine that. We are not even 10% of that show. Um, Buying-wise, it's good because then you get to try products before you buy them. You get to try the tweezers. You get to touch the lashes. You get to talk to the people. That's what it's good for. Um... Do I have a payment plan for classes? 50% is due up front to reserve a spot and the rest is due 30 days before the class. Um, doo -doo -doo. You're welcome, you're welcome, you're welcome. Thank you for saying that. Thank you. Um, if stylists are trained through their jobs, should they seek outside certification? Well, yes, what happens when you leave that job? Do they give you a certification? Um... When I come through North Carolina, I don't have any plans to come to North Carolina. You might have to book a private, honey. <laughs> um, yes, there's a, la a business class in Miami, August 20th. Um, how can one gain more clients when starting out? Search Lash 401, five free ways to get new business. Uh, okay, so I think that's it. I think we've done. All right. Um, yeah, Jesus, everybody. Hope you have a good night. Thank you for tuning in on a Friday night. Super impromptu. Um, but yeah, I love you all. Bye.